welcome back friends so in the last part i have already introduced you the concepts on python strings in that session we have seen how can you take a string how can you assign a value and how can you access a value i mean in order to print the string directly you can print with the help of a variable so well in this lecture when we're in this part will cover the remaining part of this in which we'll try to see try to analyze the concept in detail so here so we are using the concept of strings and the first thing about the string is the strings are in immutable in nature so what do you mean by this immutable in nature immutable in nature in the sense what happens is once you have taken an object of string you cannot change its content if you want to change the content or if you want to have an update on that you have to create a new string i mean new object so that's why it is under comes under immutable in nature and the other thing is that if you want to access a particular value i mean particular character as i said because the strings are the collection of characters and that are individual characters and you can access them so there is a name of process the specific name that is called as slicing with the help of slicing we can access either a character either a group of characters such as you can term them as substring or else you can call them as Uh, a part of a string so that process is called as slicing so before that first we will understand how exactly the property called immutable term has been used with respect to strings so like what we'll do is now we'll create a one string so i'll just create one string something i'm giving a name call as today so i have created a string called today in a variable called a now well i need to when i need to print this i mean if i want to print the variable of a what it contains you'll get the value is today but now what i'm going to do is i cannot update today in the object where it today has been created so in order to check the object of this today i have to access with the help of the variable on which it has been allocated so now you can see that there is an a unique id has been provided a unique number has been provided for this object now if i want to take that means for the same unique id i cannot update the value today instead of today i cannot update it with any other value or simply i can say that i cannot update it for example if i use the same name variables are actually a references that are not actually the objects so i can use the same reference variable a for example like here if i take as tomorrow then you can see that we have created another object called as tomorrow with the same reference variable a here so well if i want to print this a now when i'm printing a the updated value will be printed not the previous value so you can see that tomorrow has been printed here instead of printing today so well i i just check what's the id then you can see that there is a number here the number has been changed why because the that the reason here is this is a separate object and this is a separate object 
and as they are immutable na nature in the sense you cannot update for the same object for the same object that is what call as today in that you cannot update any value so you can see in both of that the numbers are different so in this way we when we can say that the property is in immutable in nature now for example you can also verify uh, now you cannot access the value of a as today right now for example if you want to access today and tomorrow both of that then you can access it just by taking another reference variable like here for example again if i'm taking here like here i have taken a as tomorrow right then if i want to use today also if, if i want to access to uh, today then what should i do is i can create another variable in which i can access that value of today okay so in that way you can access them okay let again i'll just do the same thing what i'll do is i'll just write a as today now a has been updated with this object called today and what i'll do is i'll take another reference variable called b for a so for that purpose what i need to do is i just has to use assignment here so here there is an error okay why because the b is not defined right the b is not defined actually what we have to do is we need to to take the value of a into b so for that purpose you need to use in this way why because now the a value has been as right hand side value has been assigned to into b now a and b contains both of them contains the same value so here you can verify with the help that how can you check this by using is operator if i will use a is b then you can see that you're getting the value as true here right and uh, you can also check the id of a as this value and you can see that id of b you're getting the same value why because why you are getting both of them as the same address it is because a and b are both the reference variable for a single object that's the reason why if i want to check whether a and b are equal you can also verify with the help of is symbol okay so no need of verifying id of a and id of b to check whether are they equal or not if they are equal really then you can use if you use a that means if you use is operator here then you will get the value as true here and if both of them have a different address i mean the different value then you'll get the value as false so in this way what you can do is you can uh i mean you can verify the both the of the variables okay so that was the thing which i have to discuss and uh, here i just now say you that that they are immutable in nature now the second thing is what i need to specify here is with respect to that we need to specify the concept of slicing here so before going to that first i'll show you with a slide that how the sliding exactly works here so for example there is a variable called a and you know the value of a string is hello world here and i take in here is that now what happens is if i want to access a specific value then i can access with the help of its index position right that means here you can see that h stands for index 0 e stands for index 1 l stands for index 2 so on even the space also consider as an index value until the last one so this process is called as forward indexing there is another process called as backward indexing in which you can access the last value where you, if you are taking a of minus 1 that means it provides us the last value here so such process is called as backward indexing because you are going for from the last onwards and if you need a range of a values then you can perform with the help of 
two index numbers, such as here, if you refer this, a of one colon five. Now, what is one here? One is the index one, and phi is the last index. And remember, phi has to be excluded, so that means only one, two, three, four will be printed here. And if you take here a of six colon, that means six in the sense it starts with the six index, and here if there is no value after colon, that means it is up to the last value. Okay, so in this way you can take the things. So we'll see now. <coughs> So for example, here, if I'm taking, I'm just taking hello here. Now, if I want to access the first value, then I'm accessing with the help of zero, that is called as forward indexing. And if I want to access the last value, then directly I can put minus one here so that backward indexing performs. So you can get O value. And if you want a range of a value, such as you need one colon three, in the sense that it access one, two, and it will be excluding three. That's why you're getting EL, okay? Only index one and index two. And uh, similarly, if you will take colon four, so you can see that as you have not mentioned here, the first value, that means it's starting from the first onwards and still three, why? Because four has to be excluded. So you're getting zero, one, two, three. In the same way, if, I, if you are taking another one, like if I'm just specifying zero here, and if I haven't specified anything here, so you can see that it is accessing till the last value. So in this way, the indexing and slicing works here. Okay, so this is the concept of slicing. And also you can access another way. There is another way by which you can access the value. Like here I'm giving, for example, if I take i is equal to one, okay. Now what I can do is I can access by another way. Instead of writing the values, I can also access with the help of an expression. For example, if I write i plus one, then you can see that you're getting as L. Why you're getting as L? Because I is actually one, one plus one, two. So two in the sense, what happens? This index two value will be up here, that is L. In the same way, if you will write as I minus one, right? Then you can see that you are accessing the first value because one minus one zero, A of zero is H. Right. In the same way, you can also access you can see that i is now one. So one into three, three. So a of three is what? L. In the same way, you can also use division. But in division, you need to be careful because if you will take normal division, what is going to happen here is There is an error here. Why? Because in a normal division, it will always give us a float value. Okay. It will give us a float value. Why? Because here it only accepts the integer values. So, in order to get the integer value, you need to use floor division. So, here if you use i floor division, so here, for example, like if I'll take this, you're getting the value that is zero, one by two, that means you're getting as flow value zero. So you're accessing the flow division. With the help of flow division, you're getting the integer value as zero so that you're getting the value as h. So in this way, also you can access the indexes as an expression. Also, we can access through value. At the same time, you can also with the help of an expression. So in this way, we have seen already that how can a slicing process performs. 
So now the next thing is that you, if you want to update the string, you cannot directly update the string. Okay, you cannot directly update the string. Okay, so you need to update the string with the help of another procedure. That means you need to take another string. In that another string, you can update it. That is how the process here is. Okay, and uh, for example, if you refer this example here, we are actually having hello world, right? Now, what I want to do is, if I just want to remove L from the given string, so directly I cannot remove L here. Why? Because I need to create another copy of an uh, object, another object in which I can take the same value, but with the our requirement. What is that? We need to remove L from there. So, such that now you can see that the this hello world, the first hello world and the last hello world, both it resides in a different object. Not in a same object. Okay, that is the difference here. Okay, so because of that reason only, the things are been like this. Now, what I'll do is I'll just take another string here. What I'll do is I'll use Hello world, right? So here, what I'm doing here is I'm just try to change this, right? So I'm just creating a string here, and in this one, what I'll do is I'll just take, I'll just take, uh, you know, I'll just uh, assign this value into another variable. So what I need to do is I will just taking C is equals to B. Now B and C are both are same. You can verify is B is C. So you'll get the value as true here. Okay. Then after that, what you have to do is now B and C contain both hello world. Right. Now in this B, what I'll do is uh, I'll just update this B. How should I update here? I have to take uh, what I need to take here is uh, I'll just uh, take zero okay so you can see that hello zero one i'll just remove this l from here so i'll just take zero one two right so zero one two means i need to take till three right then uh, there is another one operation called concatenation then after that again what i have to do is zero one two three Right, so three means I need to use four. So four, the last one. Okay. So here this thing. You can see now this hello world has been created. Okay, this hello world has been created. Now there is no L here in this one. So we have updated this. So you can also take now you can see that B has been updated with hello world. And what is C now? This hello world. Earlier we have seen B is C. So now we'll see B is C. False. Why it is getting false because now B has updated with a different object and C is accessing the previous object. Okay, why? Because both because strings are immutable in nature. Okay, so because of that reason, we are actually doing here. Now there is another operator. I said concatenation operator. So this plus symbol is called as concatenation. So we are actually doing, for example, if I write here as Hello, then in B, if I'll write as world, okay, I need to give space here. So I'm just giving the space, right? Now, what I'll do is I'll take another variable. Will I just add this reset? So now you can see if I'm printing C, you will get the value as in concatenation form with the help of plus symbol here. Okay, in the same way, 
if you want to repeat hello for three times or for multiple amount of time then you can use star symbol asterisk so you can take a asterisk 3 so you can see that hello is printing for three times in the same way if you take b star 3 then you can see that the world is printing three times why you are getting space here because you have taken space here right because of that reason okay so in this way we have taken we have seen already that how you can remove a string that means you can update it with the help of creating another string in the same way uh what we have seen is regarding the operations what is that concatenation and repetition operation okay there is another operation called as membership operator membership operator basically checks whether the given value is there as a part of the string or not like here a b c d is a string like if i am using c in a b c d then it is true and a b c d is false again i'll show you with an example here so here we have taken already this one right so in this one what we need to check is we need to check whether h is part of the string or not so you can say that h right in where it is a you will get the value as true now h is available in the variable called a because in that hello is there right and uh, similarly the other operator uh, the other kind of operator is not in so you will get as false why because h is already there here and if you want to search any other value for example like if i'm just checking j in a so you will get as false right in the same way if i take j not in a then you will get as true because j is really not there in a so in this way we have seen this session right so this is how about this part okay okay we'll meet in the next session